Okay. All right. So we will start, go back a couple of lines just to, to start at, at, a, at a starting point and then get right into further because we already discussed extensively the principle of what we're going to learn now. Uh, the line begins with the word Roya. It's just above the middle of the page, Tess. You have it? At the end of the slide. Now, there is a benim show. And there is a refers to the principle that it's possible that there should be something that is of a higher madrega, and yet it has the quality of ochir, and then of something of a lower madrega that has the quality of pony be pony. And the nimshul this would be in the beginner zo. But the Ibihina of Zo Shuhulamato mi bino. Zo is the sphere is the midas of Atsilus, which is below mid bino. <coughs> bino is Mechin, and Zo is Midas, and we all know that Mechin are above Midas, which we already discussed last time. And yet this Zo which is below Bino it has the aspect of ponim be ponim. What's mean ponim be ponim? Ponim be ponim means that you relate to the real thing itself. Hainu, which means bechinas gilui ho etzem. Where there is, a, in, in, in Zo, there is the gilui ho etzem, there is the recognition of the etzem. Just like in a ponim. Just to reiterate what we spoke over many weeks. When you see a person face, face to face, in comparison to when you see a person from the back or from the side or any other way, when you see him from the back, you know exactly this is that person. I have absolutely no doubt. But you know, you know that this is a person as a result of certain indicators. This means ochir. You know indirectly. Whereas when you see him facially, then it's, then it's direct knowledge. And the knowledge, the, di the difference is very significant. I want to emphasize. When you see him from the back and you know it's him, you know that it is him. When you see him frontally, it is him. I, not I know it is him. This is him himself. It's a different statement. Not I'm sure. When you see a person face to face and say, I'm sure this is a guy, it doesn't make any sense. It's not an incorrect statement. When you see him from the back, yes, it is a correct statement. But not in front. Why? Because it's not a question of knowledge. It's right there. It's like you and him are one person. It's just like a person knows himself. I'm sure I am I. Is that, a, is that a logical statement? And a similar manner, although, of course, it's on a lower level, but still there's a similar quality. When you see a person face to face, you can't say, I'm sure this is him, because this is him. It's like he knows himself, you know him. Not that Gilehu Etzem. In Zod there is Gilehu Etzem. And this is why it's called Pony Me Pony. Because you, 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 you have a face to face recognition. Okay, let's continue. Or Bino, and then Bino on the other hand. That the relationship between Bina and Alakus is in the enhancement of Ochebiyoch. Which means, I know it, I'm sure it is, but it's not a direct connect. connect. 
This we discussed last time. We were here right, last time extensively. The difference between how Midas relate to things and how Seichel relates to things. Midas relate to, relate to things. This is why Midas have this powerful effect. In Seichel, when you know something, this is, this is correct, this is true. It may be true, and I'm sure of it, it's not going to be compelling you to go and do something. I know it, and I can go to sleep. Neither is, is compelling. Compelling means it forces you to relate. This means a dealer who adds. Because Mida is in the Pshat, I'm going to add a couple of notches from what we discussed last. Mida means that you were personally touched. What touches a person directly, personally? An idea does not touch a person personally. A reality touches a person personally. Like you said, if I touch it, I was personally affected. If I see it, I'm not personally affected. I know for sure, but I'm not personally affected. I can close my eyes and not see it. This is the, the element of, of Midas, where there is a, a, a direct a gilihu etza, and it's compelling. And yet, Bina, which does not have gilihu etza, it's only Ochet Biochet, it is still on a higher level. How is it on a higher level? If this has the etzim and this has only Ochet, only an indirect knowledge, and this is what the Rebbe is explaining. This is what we discussed last time, and, and here's the point. Elo, except, how is it that Bina is on a higher level, and yet it is Rebchinus Oche Biochir? So what's the mile of Bina if it's Oche Biochir? Except, here is a very important point. Shuhu Bibchina El Yoyino Yoyser. Bina applies to a higher element. It applies, it, it relates to a higher element. It is the Ochir, but what does it recognize in that indirect manner? A much superior quality aspect. A higher element. This is what we discussed last time. There's a physical item, in everything, there are these two madrigas, there's a physical item, and then the, which is the item itself as it is part of the world, and then there is its, its, its significance. Like in, the, in, in, in human terms, you know, there's a watch or a clock, and then there is the clock on the wall. The clock in, in, in the closet is a clock. clock on the wall has a way a human element to it. Which is an entirely different thing, a different category completely. What is a different category? What is the difference? The clock in the drawer, it cannot be said that the world, it's, it's worth it for the world to be created so that there be a clock in the drawer. Clock on the, on, the, on the wall, which is a human element, it is worth it. That's exactly what the world was created for, for a human being and for all aspects of the human being. It is of that significance. If someone goes into a drawer, takes out a clock and breaks it, okay, he made a monetary loss. That's it. If somebody goes in and takes off the clock from the wall that you put on in your house, he offends you, which has totally different significance. You understand? 
to affect a human being. A human being, this is the crown, so to speak, of the world. He has to apologize. He has to, you know, paying is not enough. Okay, okay, I'll come back, okay. okay. This element, this element, this human element that we are saying, this intangible element. Let's, for one more line and, and I'll discuss it. So, Bina, Shehu Bebechina El Yeyna Yeser, Hainu, what is the Bechino Elino Eisa? That is, here is a definition of it. Bino applies Bechino's Hoer Elion in the aspect of the higher of the higher Oer Shemeir Bechokmo. That is Meir, that is that is bright in Chokmo. Bechino's Gilui Hamhus. In Chokmo, this Oer is in the manner of Gilui Hamhus, which we'll discuss in a moment. In a bino, so then in bino, who begins ideas are mitzvahs mize. Bino knows the same thing that Chochma does, except Chochma knows it on a mahus level, and bino knows it on a mitzvahs level. Mahus is ponim beponim, mitzvahs is ochel beochel. So we'll try to, to discuss it a little bit. First, we have to kind of revisit the principle, the difference between Chochma and Bina, which we, we should be familiar with. Which is the difference between the Ri'i and Shmi'a. And then there is Midas. So let us take, let us use Ri'i and Shmi'a and then we'll come back to Chochmah and Bina. Somebody sees something fantastic, like I give the example that use uh, use the uh, the the Niagara Falls as a, as an illustration. I don't know if you saw the Niagara Falls ever. Did you see that? Okay, it's an impressive sight, really impressive sight. It's a huge break in the middle of of a of a big lake. A lake is falling down into a river, and. Um, it's a very huge opening, a big circle, and several circles. And um, the, the fall over there is like 100 feet down, I don't know exactly that much. Very big fall. And the water is running, rushing down with tremendous force. Because it's a, you know, and uh, maybe millions of gallons of water in, in the five minutes. I don't know exactly, I remember something of, of an, an exaggerated number. Very impressive sight. So when you see that, you, you know, it's, it's an impressive sight. It's interesting to see the, the whole force of nature and all that. Then you've seen this, like I have now described to you briefly what it is. So you're impressed also. Oh, wow. It's really impressive. It does not make you even f either fear it or love it. <laughs> There's nothing to do with it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a cycle that you think. You, you, you're impressed with, 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 the, with the phenomenon. There's no way that you can make an animal be affected, be impressed with what I just now said. 
But if you take the animal down to the falls and put him right in front of the water, he'll run away. He's going to get scared. The water running like this. So the, the actual effect of it will touch the animal too. The animal has no say. To looking at it, it wouldn't mean nothing, anything. Certainly not if you tell the animal, you know, I'm going to take you to Niagara Falls. You're talking to, to the wall and worse. So this is what we're saying. Now, let's understand. When you see the Niagara Falls, even though it's a physical thing, as I said, you're impressed. The impression is not, it's not the 50, the 5 million gallons of water. It's not the noise. It's the whole phenomenon of a break in the earth. It's, it, it, it's, it's, a, um, it's a phenomenon of, of, the, of the structure of nature, structure of the world. Here is a lake, and then far from is a river. No, the Agri River, and the lake feeds into the river a tremendous force. And also, there's an important, there's an interesting, impressive thing that because the water comes down with tremendous force, you can imagine, as soon as it lands on the bottom, it's peaceful, it's quiet. You don't see the water running or, or being in a, a turmoil. They can take a rowboat right underneath the Niagara Falls, under the water. You can get wet a little bit from the, from the, you know, the sprinkles, but not nothing else. Nothing is going to happen. Interesting, the whole nature and of our water. So this is, it's an it's an impressive experience. It's an expressive view, but it takes a chacham. It takes a, a, a human being, a, a living human being who has a sense of what a world, a sense of what nature is, to be impressed by it. Somebody who does not have that sense, he would be in his point, oh, it's five million gallons of water, wow. How many years can you live with five million gallons of water? How much do I pay my, for my water bill for five million? You know, this kind of thing. It's too simple about money. Huh? I have heard comments like that, actually. Yeah. It's just about one. That's not, that's not what it's about. So Chochmah relates to a completely different phenomenon. You can't measure it. There's a certain sense of reality. Bina can, can relate to that same sense of reality that Chochmah relates to. But on the Chitzen is the Kilam and Mitzvah is level. Not on the Hus level, but on the Mitzvah is level. And this is the difference between the Eon Shmir and Chochman and Bina. Oh, okay, so that's, that, that is. Let's say you approach Niagara Falls. You never heard of it. Nobody ever saw it before. You are the first one to discover it. So you don't know. It's not a landmark. It's not a famous location. You have no idea how much water falls through it. You have no idea where it's coming from in terms of what the, the natural, you know, the connections and all that. Just come, come up on it. You'll be, as a human being, impressed. This is something very special. And you're not interested to know where it's coming from. That's later. When you first discover it, you just stand there and watch with open mouth. Look at that. You understand? What are you watching? What are you looking at? I, you're not judging how much water goes through it. But you're not trying to figure out where it's coming from, where it's going to. You're just watching the phenomenon. What? 
This is called the mohus. The reality of it, of it itself is impressive. You understand what I'm saying? Not where it's coming from, not where it's going, not its effect, not its functionality. It's presence. Huh? It's presence. It's presence. The presence itself. Yeah, the reality itself. The phenomenon itself is, is impressive. There is a town on the western United States, there is something that's called the Grand Canyon. You heard of the Grand Canyon? Grand Canyon is a, is a huge hole in the ground. Essentially, what it is, but it's huge. It goes across many miles. And it's surrounded, of course, it's a hole in the ground. It's surrounded with tall mountains, a whole bunch of waterfalls and water, waterways. It's, it's a, also, and, and um, looking at it, it's a hole in the ground. You used to ground to being flat. This is a deep, crevice in the ground, crack in the ground, very deep. There are, there's another place that I was here, we're here in the Catskills. Uh, it's called, um, um, there's also a crack in a, in, in a mountain. Uh, you know, in the middle of the mountain, uh, a deep crack. And you can walk, they made, they made um, like a, a little porch. You can walk on one side of the mountain and, and, and uh, it's very impressive, you know, like a crack, whatever it is. It gives you an impression of what the earth is, what the capacity is. What, what did God create? I'm saying this is... Do you think the earth is just uh, a ball of, of, of dust? That is a very, very, very complex present. And then you find out that in the center of the earth, the heat goes to 5,000 Fahrenheit. I mean, a, a, an exaggeration of, of heat. We're molten. You know what molten is? Melted rock. Flows like water. This is what a mountain, you know, they, they heard of a mountain eruption. That's a molten, huh? Volcano. A volcano. What's a volcano? That's melted rock. And after it runs down the mountain and, and it cools down, it's regular rock. So the Chochmah element, now with the person who is, who is sensitive, who is conscious of, of, of the godly creation, he relates to it dynamically, just to the phenomenon itself. Then he starts studying it, okay, why, what's going on over there, how hot is it, and measures it. Now that's the way the Bina element. But the first is the Chochmah, where you're not interested to know anything more than just observing it. That's the reality. That's called the Mahus. The reality itself. Ebishter has given us, the human being, the Koyach HaChochmah. And the Koyach HaChochmah is is that you learn the Chesidus Chochme is beetle, Koyach Ma. What is the significance of being beetle? The significance is just like the eel and sight. Sight also, on a physical level, has a similar has a similar effect. Where through sight, you look at the world, and as you said the other day, you look at the world, you see it without coming in contact, without touching it, without it being, uh, it being affected by it. And yet it's real. And how do, we, how do we see that reality without being in touch? It is through our eyes. Eyes are different than all other parts of the human being. And the primary difference is that eyes are transparent. 
It isn't. The eyes see and they tell you. The, the, the sight goes right in. This is why it's the reality itself. It doesn't interfere. It doesn't translate what you see. You just see the reality itself. This is called the ear. This is called Chochmah. This is why sight is extremely important to the human being, to the extreme. A person who, who doesn't see doesn't have a real connection to the world. The world is not real to him. Even to the extent that it says that a sumo doesn't have a yitzhara. A yitzhara, but can, why can't he just enjoy whatever it is, you know, a good steak or a good cake, whatever it is? No way. Because it's not real. It's only taste. It's not real. That's why Shabbos, I mentioned the other day, Shabbos, you have to have candles on the table. What is the original, what is the, the principle of candles on the table? I'll call them a second. So you should be able to enjoy your food. You need light to enjoy your food. Because the light makes it possible for you to see it. And seeing the food is, is a major element of enjoying the food. But what kind of element? An intangible element. Restaurants. Huh? I'm saying restaurants, like fine restaurants, is the same food, but they decorate it so beautifully that people pay much more money to eat it. That's also true of light. Seeing the food is very important to a poet in general. Whether it's decorated or not, just seeing the food is an important thing. Because then it's not just well, I the taste, and then, then it's a reality. It's complete. It's, it, this is an intangible element, which is possible only in sight. You cannot describe it and enjoy it. That you can't say something, close your eyes, I'll tell you exactly what it looks like. <laughs> no way. I want to see it. To the extent that the Yitzhahora doesn't reach up to something that you can't see. It's interesting. Okay. Rebusha has given us the human being, this is the, the primary koya, the primary union of the human being is the Chochmah. Because as a result of Chochmah, the human being, just like physically, you can connect the reality of the world, with Chochmi, you can create the reality of God. With Bina, you will not connect to the reality. You, you will have proofs and arguments and, and, in the, and like Ocher Ocher, indirect knowledge. You'll know about it. You'll taste it. In a meter, you'll taste it. But, huh? but in the practical level, I mean, in our lives, could you say that the Bina brings us to Chochmah? Like, no. to see that first, you take the proofs, and then you go higher and you extrapolate, and then you go to um, Okay. So the thing is like this. What you're saying is there's a certain element of truth, but it's not exactly that way. Bina does not create Chochmah. On the contrary, Chochmah provides for Bina. But... What happens in our world, when we have Chochmah without Bina, we don't trust it. We don't say, oh, that's imaginary, it's not real. And then when you, when you bring it down to Bina, you understand, it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's real. And then you begin to actually pay attention to the Chochmah. It is a Chochmah principle that God created the world. I don't need any proofs for it. But then you have a tangible world. It's like, God created this world. Where is God? In this? I don't see God. I see only physical thing. So you begin to doubt your own vision. But then when you learn to see this and you learn and, and it begins to make sense, and then you say, yeah, I can, I can relate to that principle that God created the world. To the original principle that I that I, that I dreamt of when I was a little when I was you know before I started learning. 
what's the principle? That's what I don't understand. Excuse me? What I don't understand is what is that principle in Chokhmah? Is it the Muna that created the world? What's that principle in Chokhmah? It's a grant to the whole world. That principle is that the world that I'm seeing, reality itself, the fact that there is anything, the truth of this which I see is beyond that which meets the eye. It represents a, a, a truth that is not tangible. Anything tangible can be here, it cannot be here. But this represents a truth that is, that is, that is beyond that variation of presence and not presence. It's, it's, it's real, meaning it's real in and of itself. It's not real only because I see it. Whether I see it or not, it is real. In other words, Chochma relates to that, to that which is beyond what it sees. What is the meaning that God created the world? The meaning of these words. The meaning of these words is that the world has no existence. This world, as we see it, it does not exist on its own. Its existence is brought into being brought into existence. Why do you say that it's here? No, it's not. Its existence is too true, it's much truer than the fact, than the fact that I can touch it. Because anything I can touch can be destroyed. But the world is not destructible. The way I see it in my heart, the world is not destructible. Why? But because it's not, it is not limited to what it is by touch. Like I said before, in everything there is the, the object itself, and then there is the, the superior, the godly, or the human element in it. And let's go back to the human element. You see the clock on the wall. How did the clock go on and get on the wall? How do you know that? Because it doesn't belong now. I mean, it belongs, but it's not, it doesn't appear now. Because what? Because it's, uh, it's not in a natural place. It's in an artificial place. It's made. Because it represents something beyond its own existence. There's purpose inside. There's something greater in it than, than what it is. This something greater is the human element. The clock doesn't, doesn't have that on its own. Not the clock and not the wall. It is a real thing. If you are going to contemplate, go, oh, I don't like the clock over here. I'm going to move it over there. Are you crazy or something? You have, you have no business changing it. This is something that was put up by the people who live here. You have no right to touch it. Why? I'm just touching it. No, you're not touching it. You're touching this human being. In other words, what you're seeing there is something infinitely truer and more real than the clock and the wall. It's transparent, like you said. What do you mean? It's like if it's transparent. Like it's transpa transparent. It's transparent. It projects something higher. Uh, something much higher, something more true. The human element is more true than the wall and the, and the, and the, and the clock. If there is no wall and there is no clock, the human being will make a wall and make a clock. This is what Chochmah sees in the entire world. Something in it is, that, is, that is infinite. Even though 
in, in, in a tangible world, and a tangible world, everything is, is limited, everything is measurable. But there is something behind that. The whole natural phenomenon, like we said, there is a Niagara Falls, there is, there, there's a drop, there is rain, there is shine, there is rivers flowing all over the world. This is not, this is not a physical phenomenon. There are arteries in of water, you know, whatever you want in, in the world, if you dig deep enough, you'll find fresh water. Just like a human being. Any place in the human being, if you put a needle in you, there's going to be blood, right? Any place. Any place in the earth that you're going to dig, you're going to find a life, you know, a, a water. Maybe, yeah. huh? Maybe oil. Maybe not oil. Do you understand what's going on? So this is all, this is already the Bina aspect. But the Chochmah doesn't need all that. Chochmah doesn't need all that. It immediately sees this is greater than what meets the eye. This is truth itself. Like the Rambam, this is what the Rambam says. I mentioned all the time. Right in the beginning, the first, the first aloha in Rambam. You say it, I say this, we amud ha-chochmis. You understand what I'm saying? Later, she has shown Mozart to know that there is a first being, mamtsi kol nimtsa, brings everything into existence. O me amit is him mozart nimtsa kol nimtsa. From the truth of his being, all the nimtsa came, 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 came to be. This is, you say it, I say this. This is before you begin to think, Logically, this is the Yisod of Chochmah. Before we begin to say, we think logically. This is what the Anushoma tells us: that everything has a, a true, a godly truth in it, and it comes from a godly truth. How do I know? I just know. I just see it. I just, uh, I just, one time, I you probably heard it from me already. I had a group of boys by me, Purim. Um, these boys are kind of the cry heights boys, like here, but they're whackling them. They're, 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 they're the rebels by us, you know what I'm saying? They have tightness and all that. They're good boys. So they were sitting there, Purim, so I wanted to you give them, get, get them excited about that. Tell me, If you perceive the idea of the world being suddenly destroyed, poof, whatever it is, an explosion or whatever it is, totally eradicated, eliminated, everything on the earth is eliminated. But there is no suffering. Nobody suffered. Not the human being, nobody suffered. It's just eliminated. Instantaneously. Would you consider that a tragedy? Tragedy means it's a loss. Oh, how's for show such things should happen? Nobody suffered it. What's so terrible about it? So they were stumped a little bit, thinking, hey, one of the boys said, if nobody suffered, then nothing happened. He was kind of honest, okay? He came through and said, if nobody suffered, then nothing happened. And when you think about it, if you do not have a developed chokhmah perception, he is absolutely right. If you see the world from the way the scientist sees the world, then nothing happens. Is it not seen, not seen? Nothing. Nothing happened. What's a big deal? The whole world is all a precarious thing. It's cause and effect. There's no no effect. So what's what's wrong about the thing that's caused? Only if you have a, if you perceive this chokhmah, this truth, the godly truth in the world, only then you would say, oh wow, that's a terrible thing to happen. 
type, you cannot see that it's a tragedy. What's a tragedy? What's a tragic event? Everybody <laughs> died. They, they evaporated. They didn't have the suffering of, di- of dying. Okay. Go ahead. But still, uh, they, they, were, they were living, and, that's, and now they're not existing. When they were living, were they going to die and eventually? Yeah. So they died prematurely. What's so terrible about that? I'm being the devil's advocate, so to speak. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. if you only have an answer, what's the answer? Life has, uh, it's worth living. Life is worth living. Like what? Living like what? What's it worth? What is it worth to living for? It's Come on, carry it to the end. It's infinitely worth living. Huh? It's infinitely worth living. Okay. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. You're right, of course. But this is an intangible phenomenon. Insight. This is not something that you can explain with simple logical terms. You could say, I understand that there is an objective of this world, like we're growing towards something, so if everything would be evaporated, we wouldn't achieve that special goal, and therefore it's a tragedy for me. What's the point of the goal? Let's say people were um, developing a car, and then something happened, and their plans were destroyed, and you can't develop a car. Is that so tragic? It's tragic. Uh, in proportion to the development they wanted. That's all. But it's not a tragedy. It's tragic, but uh, oh, it's, uh, so much effort in, uh, go, goes, to, goes to nothing. It's not a tragedy. It has to be a divine objective for it to be. Oh. Be when we perceive that there is a divine <laughs> presence in the world, a divine meaning to every life, then you say, yeah, oh wow, that's a tragedy. Yeah. This is what Chochmah perceives. Something beyond the, the physical presentation. That's why it says, God created the world. The world does not maintain itself. It's not come by itself. It doesn't represent itself. Represents the godly will. That's what it's, its reality. When we think a little deeper into the question itself, and we actually have a chokma perception of the world, then we realize that the question is not valid to begin with. Valid. Why? Because it's impossible for the world to be destroyed. The whole question comes from a very superficial, limited understanding of the world. Which comes from, from our scientific understanding. You know, cause and effect. The whole world is maintained because it, one thing holds up the other. So it collapses. There's nothing there. But that's not what it, what it is. The whole world is held up by godly will, not by, by, by natural cause and effect. It's impossible that it should be, that it should be destroyed. This is the Chochmah. This, in Chochmah has it been Mahus. Mahus means you actually see this reality. And all your, your whole logical process, your whole cycle is based on that vision, on that recognition. Bina understands that thing, but it understands it the mitzius. It knows that it is like that. Let's, let's, take, let's take the following illustration. 
there is nature. Nobody understands what nature is. Nature is the rule that the Rebishter leads and guides the world by. This is where the Rebishter wanted the world to run. Whether you understand it or not, this is the way the Rebishter wanted. That's why the, uh, I know that it's the Chochmah, so to speak, I know that there is a certain way that the world is running, and this, this is it. This is where the Rebishter wanted. Bina understands how that works. And in Bina we know that if I hold this cup and I'm going to let it, let it go, it will, it's going to fall. This is part of nature. I know it's going to fall. And I'm 100% sure it's going to fall. But I don't understand. I don't have a sense of it. I know this Bimitsius. I know that this is what's going to happen. This is called Bimitsius. I do not have a feel for it. That this, is, this is what should happen. In Chochmah, I have a sense of this is what should happen. In Bin, I do not have a sense that this is what should happen. I know that this is what's going to happen. This is the Mitzvah and the Mahus. What does it mean it should happen? It should happen means, think of it, think of the following thing. If this cup had the option to fall on the ground or not to fall, right? There's nothing, nothing, there's no natural correlationship between things on the earth and the earth. You would not have, you would not have a centralized world. God created Odom or Yishin, God says, Odom, and he should rule the world. How can you rule the world? He can decide, fly off into, into space. <laughs> How can you rule the world? There has to be a, a, a coordinated presence. This is the perception of God. Bina does not necessarily understand this. I mean, you can understand the Mitzvah of it, but not the reality of it. But the Mitzvah of it, he understands. And that, that's why he knows this, based on, on, on this coordinated reality, this has to fall down to the ground. Otherwise, he has a, an independent presence. So without, Chochmah, huh? Chochmah's should be that way? And, mm. huh? Chochmah is beyond why it should be that way. Kochme doesn't look for the reasons. Kochme looks for the, for the essence, for the mahus. What does it mean? What does it mean that this falls to the ground? So the scientists, they say, because the ground pulls it, there's uh, the gravity. What does it mean? It means that there is a reunity in the world. You understand? Mm -hmm. Everything comes together, and they're interrelated. And where is, where is Bina? Where is Bina start? And Bina starts in ascending, yes, they're interrelated. How are they interrelated? This is going to fall to the ground. They can't take it away. You can lift it, but that's not dissociated. Even as you lift it, the reason it stays on my hand is because it's really related to the ground. Otherwise, the minute you lift it, it will fly you off. Is it like Bina? Bina is like it's a fact. Something is a fact. The Chokhmah is like it belongs this way. Oh, it's, it's a reality. It's truth itself, exactly. And it has, it has a, Chokhmah relates to, so to speak, the God, the divine truth. Is that why it's about beetle? Like that's right, that's why it's beetle. It's beetle because if it were a metzius unto itself, it's not bottle, it would not be able to see that kind of truth. 
it would have to translate it in its own mitzvahs. That's not truth. Truth is to relate the truth to the truth itself, to the godly truth. That's why only to Beatles can you relate to the godly truth. I don't know how to do it. This is the way the Rebish made it. This is the way the Rebish told This is where we have a godly truth in the world. That's it. That's beyond human understanding. Like if you say in Bina, you would say it's a fact that God exists because the world couldn't make itself. And in Hoffman, you would say it's not a fact that God exists. <laughs> to say it's a fact that God exists is a really a problem. Like, how can you imagine that this needs to be factual? It's just. I see the godly element. I don't need, I don't need proof or logical. I see the godly element. There's no distance. It's not like from here till there I'll get. That's there. right. More Just like you said, I know a human being hung yourself because he approved or because that's the way you perceive it. This is the way we perceive it. Then you can argue the point, not argue the point. That's already on a different level. This is what we're saying that Bina relates to a much higher oir than Midas do, even though this is Ocher Biyocher, and this is Ponim Epon. But what oir does it relate to? To the oir that Chochme has, been, has in Mohus. And because Chochme has it in Mohus, Bina has access to it on its level, in Mitzi level. But it loses the purity, the, the Chochme loses the it loses the purity of Chokhmah, of course. It's impossible. It comes in analytical in a way, sophisticated. It its well, yes, it's sophisticated and analytical and all that, but it loses the reality. Just one second, please. It's after a time anyway. Sorry. Yes, hello, my friend. Naftali, I'll call you back. I'm, I'm middle of class a little bit over here. I'm finishing, but I'm still in the middle. I'll call you back in, the, in, in, the, you know, in 10, 20, 15. Okay? So, but then we could see how Bina is really much higher than Midas. Because Midas relate to the clock itself, to the Mitzis. Bina questions, who put this up out there? How do you know anybody put it up? Chochman tells me something, somebody put it up. Midas don't even perceive it that way. Oh, what a beautiful clock. <laughs> it's a completely different, <laughs> a completely different uh, arena. Element. So it's like me, this is all about the experiential value that I experience. That's right. And and this, this is a fact, and Chokhmah is this belongs to this. This is the reality, right? So my question is if Chokhmah is already so pure, what do we mean in Muna? That Amuna, Amuna is the the pinnacle of Chochmah. You know, pinnacle means the Nakuda. Like a Chochmah is represented by a Yud. And Amuna is the Koitzish of Yud. This is where, when Chochmah is already a Koyach, this is where the Koyach is connected to the Nefesh, to the Rots. This Koitzish of Yud connects it to the Rots. This is not even a visible element. So let's just establish where we are.
Okay, so this is where we're going. Okay, fine. Okay, or dua, that's where you're up to. Okay? Reb Abram, yeah. To where? To whom? Yeah, I'll, I'll. Sure, 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 yeah.